Well, another day, another video. So what I've got here today is uh, it's a combination of uh, marketplace finds, uh, auction finds, and just some dedicated hard work and looking this stuff up and tracking it down and making deals and buying things. My wife uh, discovered a treasure trove of things uh, yesterday and made a deal and went and bought them. Got a really good deal on a lot of things. But uh, let's start looking at them. So to start off with, I wanted to feature this one item that I thought was a little unusual. I like to buy unusual things. Uh, just have them sitting around for a while. And if I ever find the right buyer for it, I'll, I'll connect them. But uh, this I got from one of Global Voodoo's auctions online. And it is a sterling silver corn necklace. Now, I understand people collect all types of things, but I've not heard of corn jewelry until I saw this. I uh, looked it up online, uh, you know, and there's just a lot of different variations of it. But uh, the main reason I bought it, it was unusual, it was sterling silver. And I, I believe you can't go wrong with sterling silver. Price goes up and down. But um, it's always something that I tend to buy when I when I see it as good quality sterling silver. And that's what this is, you know. Uh, my wife doesn't care for it as far as a fashion piece for herself, but, um, you know, she's always allowed first refusal of any jewelry I buy, but this was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a good price and a uh, fair price. And, uh, so we got it and now it's going to be sitting around, uh, in the house here for a while again, until I can find the right person to match it with. It's not something I'm just going to throw out there for sale. So, and most likely just keep it. But yeah, that's pretty good. Not bad detail on the corn, but again, it's sterling silver. That's pretty nice. Then, uh, this was from the January house auction. This is a while back for these, but I haven't shown them. And I'm starting to make videos now, so might as well. Little Golden Books. And I like this one because Maverick was my favorite TV series. Uh, this little golden book, uh, nice little story, good illustrations in it. These are nice and clean. Uh, these are actually going to my dad. My dad collects uh, Western memorabilia and um, little spurs, chaps, cowboy hats, saddles uh, is what he collects. But uh, look at this here, Warner Brothers Cheyenne, little golden book. Here's another one. Again, pretty good graphics inside. Everything is still bright. And uh, these are titles that I haven't seen before. I know they're out there. I just uh, uh, The only little golden books I had when I was a kid were uh, Pokey Little Puppy and things like that. And I never saw these kind for sale. Uh, of course, because the TV shows were out of... Out of uh, they weren't being shown when I was little. Um, the Tales of Wells Fargo. Man, these are just uh, awesome little books. Now, see, these are the kinds that I had in the back here. The wild animals and the dogs and birds and things. Uh, Christmas stories. That I get Disney's Donald Duck. But those are pretty cool. And again, like I said, those are going to my dad. And he'll keep them for a while. Um, take a look at these. These are what my wife got. Well, there's a nice old shaver from... Anywhere from the 40s to, I believe, the 60s. I haven't really looked that up yet. I don't know too much about the razors, uh, but I'll learn. <clears throat> and my wife, again, on the Marketplace yesterday, she found some cool items. This is on Facebook Marketplace, and this is why I always say, get on there and save this stuff. You know, it, it's it's going to get into the wrong hands. And what I mean by that is somebody who won't appreciate them, and they'll be thrown around and left outside but fortunately we got these from somebody uh who really cared for them <clears throat> but these i believe were from brooks t yeah the saga of the ships brook bond t and tea bags this is from uh london <clears throat> but if you look at these you'll see a lot that are kind of the same but when you get into collecting things kind of like i do you start collecting variations and you can, on these, you can see color variations and, uh, you know, lighter and darker, 
as the backdrops and things on them. They're all in mint condition. Um, see, look at all these. So we got three, well, two, almost three full sleeves. Sorry about that. Printed. And these are nice. This is a, uh, oh, both sides. So, and actually I didn't discover that until I just now looked at them while I'm making the video. So both sides are full. So we've got a whole set, complete sets here of uh, the Saga of Ships. And it's pretty cool. We like uh, nautical items. We used to live close to the ocean and uh, we'd sit out and watch the uh, sailing, sailing vessels go by. Um, fishing boats and what have you. But then uh, they also had these ones professionally framed. Uh, sorry about that glare. They're the same ones, but they're in frames by a local uh, Michaels. But they're professionally framed. So that costs a little bit of money, but she got these pretty cheap. So we got two two full frames and, and all these other cards uh, down here, which is really cool. Um, along with those. And then uh, here's another set from the tea company. But if you notice on the back here, this is only Brook Bond tea. Ah, dirty fingernail. Um, Brook Bond tea. And so I have to look up when that variation happened. That way I can get an exact age of these. And then we have some dog series from Oxford Cigarettes. And those are English as well. Um, Eskimo, huh, this is a husky, uh, this one, I have a husky in here somewhere in the house, a Siberian shepherd, I should say, he doesn't like being called a husky, but um, we'll move on, so this is what I talk about when I talk about on videos, like if I watch uh, the January house or any other auctions, I'll usually ask for uh, vintage car parts. And in my first video, I mentioned how I gotten some from the January house from Mike and John, uh, some Tootsie toys and things. But this is a Hubley, and this is uh, an old Cadillac. But you can see the condition that it's in. This is going to stay in the same condition as it is. I don't like to refinish these. This has a nice played with look. But this is a Hubley car. The only thing it's missing is its two front tires. Now, I ordered some, and the person sent me the wrong size tires, but they were aged exactly like this. Now, see, this is in actually pretty good shape. It'd be worth a little bit if it was all, you know, 100% complete, even with the paint loss on it. But, uh, you know, all you do is you get the rubber tires, and you soak them in some hot water, and they'll go right over those hubs real easy. And uh, now I see something like that. And I think about the little kid that played with that thing. Might have been their only toy. Might not have been. But, you know, this got played with. And it's honest wear. And you can't ask for anything more than that when you collect old cars. Well, you can ask for them in perfect condition. But then they cost a whole lot of money. I prefer the inexpensive ones that people cast away. Because they're not perfect. And that's, you know, I'm not perfect. So why not collect imperfect toys, you know? <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh I'm going to save the best piece for last, though. And uh, I also collect old bottles. So we found these uh, applied label bottles, uh, Peerless Beverages, True Quality. This is probably from uh, the 30s, 20s, 30s. Uh, but if you look at the back of this, uh, Sparkling Beverage... But uh, the Peerless Beverage Company in Fresno, California. See, we live in Fresno County. It's a large, large area. But uh, Fresno County, I always collect no matter where I live. When I lived in the Bay Area, the town I grew up in, well, I've got old bottles from that town. But finding something for these are sought after locally pretty, pretty much, uh, even in the condition they're in. They're not the best condition, but they were just dug up. So and here's one. Everybody has kissed. You know, it's about every state. Uh, see, because it's a citrus product of Chicago, Illinois. But it's a seven ounce jar uh, bottle. I keep saying jars. I'm looking at old ball, ball, ball jars right now. Um, sparkling Kiss Beverages in sterilized bottles. Bottled by Kiss Beverage. 
Fresno, California. So these are cool. These are going to my collection. I'm going to clean them up a little bit, just getting the dirt out of the inside. You have to be very careful with these labels. If you soak them too much in water, trying to clean them, it, uh, it makes it flake off. And uh, not too much is needed for the outside other than some Windex on it, but the inside's dirty. So I want to get those uh, looking pretty good. And this Triton Motor Oil. It's a small bank. Save with Triton. Uh, it's probably from the 50s, late 40s, 50s. Um, Union Oil Company. Uh, this was part of a clean out I did uh, in Fresno. Oh, a few months back. But I, it was something interesting I thought I'd put on a video just to see if I can get interest in my channel and all this. And there's more good things to come uh, as I clean my garage out. That's a project. When I went out to look for a box to ship something today, I said again, <laughs> I need to clean this up. So, John Raver, if you're watching, you say you have uh, tons of boxes in your room. <laughs> I've got them out in the garage, too, and in my room. Now, what's really cool is this piece here. It's an old wagon train lunchbox. There's no thermos. The handle's messed up on it, but um, bad shape. But again, my dad collects this stuff, so I know he doesn't have one. So he's going to get this as well. Um, you know, it's got the cool graphics on the side with the pistols whip and the gauntlets. And on the back, there's a nice riding and shooting scene. Um, doesn't have a date on it, but I, I assume it's 50s or 60s. 1964. That was, that was, that was pretty good. <laughs> 1964. And I love these old metal mailboxes. I want so badly an Adam 12 lunchbox. I had one when I was a kid. Yeah, that made me want to be a police officer, and it just uh, was a nice, nice little lunchbox. I want one. Uh, excuse me for the going off camera here real quick, but okay. Now, this is something I'm doing some research on. Um, this is one of the reasons that attracted us to the buyer. Oh, the buyer gave us that, uh, not the buyer, the seller gave us that for free. Uh, lunchbox but check this out uh, and if anybody's seen this you know help me out in the comments if you can I, I know i don't have very many uh subscribers and viewers right now but uh this is a stanley thermo thermos and it's got minute made advertisements on it uh fresh frozen as you could you could read it minute made orange juice um uh, a big cup there's cracked a little bit uh but for the age it's pretty good. Now, I've done a little bit of research because, you know, sometimes you don't think about when a product was first introduced unless it's, like, old and you know it, you know. Minute Maid's been around for a while, and uh, I learned last night that Minute Maid began uh, production in 1946, which puts it around the era of the Stanley container. One of the most intriguing parts is, you, you know, you can see these. This is all scratched up and expected for the age. But... This applied, uh, it's like a decal almost. Yeah, it is decal. Um, they used this type of can in the 1950s. So this canister is probably from 1945, 46, and it's professionally coated. This isn't a spray paint job. I could tell spray paint from, um, you know, factory coating, and this is, you know, spray paint. It still has the original stopper inside. The lid's hard to get off, so I'm not going to take it off. Uh, wooden handle, the bail handle's still there. But one of the best parts, it's got a little spigot down here. You just This is where you distribute. And that's time period. It's got a little bit of rust on it, some scratches. But again, for its age. Um, uh, here we go. Ah, it's upside down. I was trying to figure out which way this was. Now look on the bottom here. You know, Stanley. And if you notice, this nice... Olive green color, and you probably saw some of the label already, but you can guess. This is what made it interesting to me. Uh, if you look at this, Type F1, I'm still looking this up. This isn't the area of equipment and personal items that I collect in military, but now I know the um, AAF is Army Air Force. Now, at the end of World War II, it went from Air Corps to Air Force, 
but it was still part of the army. It didn't split off till later on into its own uh, branch of the armed forces. So these in the 40s, if you find them older, 1940s and so, these were issued like to bomber crews. They didn't, I don't, some, some might have been taken up in the bombers uh, for hot coffee or something like that maybe, or prior to takeoff. I'm not sure. But that's what a, kind of a brief story I read on it. So I'm not going to really say this is for sure what it is. All I know right now is it's a Minute Maid orange juice uh, container. Now, this could have been, uh, as a theory, this could have been provided for military use in a mess hall. I know when I was in the Army, we had, uh, you know, Coke dispensers and things to get our beverages of after basic training, of course. But... Uh, uh, permanent station. Uh, we had uh, things like this. Out in the field is where we would get things like this. Uh, containers like this for our coffee or juice. When we did get breakfast in the morning instead of MREs or things like that. But uh, I'm looking into it. I, I'm going to send a message to Minute Maid and find out if they've ever done anything like this. And I'm going to also write to Stanley. Uh, send some photos. Uh, they still make the thermoses, and they have a a site where you could tell dates from things. But you know, given the label is fifties, this would fit forty five, forty six, and since the company started in you know forty five, it's it's possible this was done. I mean, there was a lot of surplus that was sold to civilian markets, and if this was a marketing uh, idea for them, that was great. No. You know, it does have it on both sides. Look closely placed. I don't know. You know, like I said, either way, it's still a great thermos and it's still a military thermos. If I find out if it's not original and I don't know, I might take it back to the original shape. I don't know. Just keep it. But it's, I thought it was cool. Didn't pay much for it. Uh, as you know, I buy things pretty cheap. I don't really pay up for something unless it's a collectible I really want and then it doesn't matter and I'll just buy it even if it's overpaying um, I lied when I said the last piece <laughs> don't worry I bought equipment today to make better uh, videos uh, stationary equipment and better cameras and uh, won't have this clunkiness to it but we found this also uh, framed this is a children of the world series and it's from Betsy Ross Bread. Um, I've got to look this up, see when they made Betsy Ross Bread. But these look 20s, 30s to me. Um, you know, they have some kids down here. They have uh, from Palestine. You know, they have one from Scotland, which is my interest because we're Scotch-Irish. Scots-Irish, excuse me. And then uh, this one that I think is going to be worth the most money is a Sioux Indian uh, girl here. Now, these are some things that you won't find that might be politically incorrect these days for that one. Maybe some of these other ones. But hey, it's just it's old advertisement. And they were just bringing awareness of the children of the world with their bread and how healthy it is. But this has a little recipe. And I believe each one of these on the back has uh, bread recipes. But... Um, We'll get back to you on the age for those and all this. Um, these are probably going to go in my shop. That's right. Colos for COVID. But they'll be online. You know, I'm, I'm uh, on Facebook also under Bear Flag Mercantile. Uh, haven't had much activity on there lately because of COVID. But I'm going to start posting stuff on there and selling on there. Um, items for our personal collection won't be on there. But um, So, check us out. I'm on... Uh, I'm on eBay as Bear Flag Mercantile. Keep it all simple. I'm on Facebook as Bear Flag Mercantile. Uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm CaliKid67, but you'll see our, uh, our logo for Bear Flag Mercantile on the name. I don't want to change. I didn't want to change it, but I wanted it to be all business now. Maybe some other stuff, but... Yeah, keep up if you want. If not, you know, have fun looking at the videos. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, like and subscribe. 
There's going to be more videos coming. And again, like I said, once I get my equipment I ordered today, a uh, new camera, microphone, some editing software, uh, better than what I have, I will be on there making better videos, probably better sound quality. You know, just the clunkiness will be gone. But, hey, this is all for entertainment. People are locked down because of COVID, looking for some content. Hopefully, this is something you all are interested in. And, again, I, I'm trying to bring uh, an awareness of antiques and collectible to people who normally wouldn't do this. Uh, you would be surprised at the tonnage of items that go into dumpsters by people cleaning out their parents' estates or finding a house with old stuff in it. They throw it away, and then you have some people who uh, think they know it all and will give you some kind of crazy high prices for things when uh, they're not worth that much. They're just unawareness of value to collectibles, and I'm going to try to help with that. I don't know it all, uh, and if I don't know something, I'll try my best to look it up to help with uh, identification of it or, you know, just give you a basic value. What I go by is by current auction value. And sometimes that's incorrect because sometimes people get in a bidding war over things. But anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, everybody have a safe day and we'll see you on the next video.